I'm Dean Newland, and welcome to the Business of Intuition, where I coach, facilitate, train, and speak on the hard science and meaningful experience of intuitive leadership in business, so you can make better decisions, forge real connections, and creatively solve problems to amplify your impact and simplify your life. Welcome to the Business of Intuition. Here's a question. Are you navigating your career path or just drifting along? Well, my next guest on the business of intuition is a really brilliant guy by the name of Misa Rubin. And we have really talked about how to discover how to make your next career leap with purpose and with confidence. He has really walked the talk about how to do that. Uh, He had, in our conversation, shared three major themes. Number one, uh, self-discovery and personal values and career choices. He talked about emphasizing the importance of understanding one's own values, skills, and aspirations to make informed and fulfilling career decisions. He spoke of the need to help and create deep awareness in career development. So, One, we really got to figure out what we want to do and who we are before we actually make the career uh, leap. Number two, we talked about exploration and adaptability. The idea here is exploring various opportunities and being adaptable in the uh, ever-evolving job market is extremely important. Amisha highlighted the importance of being open to different experiences and continuously learning to stay relevant in. Uh, the changing uh, job market. Of course, there are so many opportunities today, it's hard to uh, get clear about all of them. But his process is really a very methodical one, one that really is all about, uh, again, knowing yourself, knowing what you want, and and trying on uh, a lot of different opportunities and, and seeing what works for you. But in a very, you know, analytical, systemic or, or systematic way. And then number three, he talked about a kind of the, the managerial role in career development, meaning that if you are a manager within a company, how do you apply some of these processes to be able to support the career development of people that work under you? So we had a great discussion about that as well. So he came up with three basic uh, recommendations, which he gets into much more in our interview. Uh, one, individuals should develop a career blueprint, which he shares us uh, the process for that. Number two, supervisors and companies uh, should incorporate career development conversations in their annual review, which sometimes and often get missed. And then three, parents should encourage diverse experiences for our younger people, for our kids, and for our students. Uh, Misa uh, Rubin is a career educator and CEO of what is called the Career Leap. His mission is to facilitate meaningful, intentional changes at work and in life. He helps executives and professionals reinvent careers, dream jobs, and thrive at work. He was a very successful partner at Ernst & Young, where he spent 15 fruitful years in his career. He sold and managed hundreds of millions of dollars worth of projects and guided careers of hundreds of professionals. His uh, 20-year corporate experience, personal quest for meaning and work, with hundreds birthed what is now called, of course, the Career Leap Method, a guided, actionable inquiry that is structured for you to discover and pursue your next career move. Misha has worked with hundreds to reinvent their careers, start new businesses, and re-energize their lives. Misha Rubin on the business of intuition. So, Misha, great to have you on the show, and uh, I'm just really pleased to uh, get to know you a little bit more. Let's start off our conversation with you. Uh, You had this pretty successful Wall Street career, and now you're into something completely different. You know, tell us about your reasons for shifting your career. What was the process like? And I think that by hearing that process, some of us are going to go, Hey, I identify with that. So let's start with you. Let's hear your. Yeah, let's do it. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here with you. So, you know, imagine it's, you know, Tuesday, I think afternoon, it's like an office 
and I'm sitting there with a bunch of my colleagues. It was before COVID, so it was like a real office with real people. <laughs> and people, you know, one of these business development meetings and everybody sharing. And which company are you working for at the time? Are you able to share? And I, yeah, 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 sure. Right? I was okay, a partner at Ernst right. & Young. And yeah, so I'm sitting there and people like, and, and then I hear myself speak, you know, in this corporate voice and saying something, you know, important. And as I speak, I hear my quiet voice that tells me, Misha, you're mm -hmm. done with this. You're not going to do this anymore. And at that time, I spent 15 years at big four management consulting firm. I was a partner. I made more money than an immigrant from Ukraine mm -hmm. could have ever imagined. I had this trophy like career. And at the same time, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do next. I was, you know, I, I was a breadwinner, had three young children. So here I am at this kind of the cross point. And this was a moment of mm. truly of choice for me. But I realized that like, if I'm not going to leave my corporate career, that I'll do some type of a damage to myself. And, you know, and I did something that I don't recommend anybody to do. I jumped over the cliff. And as I was flying over the cliff, I realized there are so many people around me and not around me that kind of in the same inquiry, what should I do with my, like, what should I do that would be meaningful, that would be fulfilling, that will take in all my talents, help me realize my potential, will make the type of impact that I, there's so many people kind of at the, these crossroads, whether quietly, whether it's actively. And I realized that what we're lacking in our society is some type mm. of a career education, some type of a way for people to make good choices, like how do I know what's the right thing for me? How do I choose it among all these other options? When is the right time to make change? So when you say how you, to you make jumped it, off the cliff, and that's what basically was that. I I know that must be a metaphor, but you mean that you did you just quit all at once, and or what did you do? What was the reason? What yes. was the why did you call it jumping off a cliff? Yeah, because it was sub sudden. It was rapid. It was quick it was like okay and let's you do did it not know at the time what i it knew that be. i want you just knew that you didn't want it or did you have an inkling of what the other side was i knew that i wanted to do something in personal development but i didn't have a very clear idea about what exactly what i wanted to do you know i studied with a lot of different amazing teachers so i was accumulating a lot of kind of the knowledge and modalities of how to work with people i also but I didn't okay. know exactly what, what was it your, was. What uh, was your specialty uh, in Ernst & Young? I was cold getting okay. uh, risk You were not necessarily in the financial uh, services. The part of the business that had to do with strategic planning or, or you know, the people side. It was, it was, it was pretty technical. Okay, very good. Yes. Well, let me ask you this because it's. I want to get into the conversation about career education and that comment you just made. I think is very important and neat, what we need to underline, because I don't think we teach people how to decide what their career should be. We kind of just throw them out there and say, go get an education, go get some vocational training, best of luck. And, and hopefully through hell or high water, grit or whatever, you're going to find your way. And if you could provide some sort of a roadmap, I'm really wanting to hear that. So hold that thought for a second. Did you, when you made that big leap, was it a sudden awareness or was it one that kind of creeped up on you over months and years and you finally paid attention to it? It's not that I didn't pay attention to it. It was years. You know, it was years that I knew that I wasn't, you know, I remember that phone call that I waited so long, like Misha, you became a partner and I knew it was such a big accomplishment and I worked so hard for it. And I also knew it wasn't it. So it wasn't like something completely new. And that's something that was with me for a long time. But for a long time, like I didn't know what to do with that. I didn't have clarity about how to move forward. And suddenly there was this impulse that was just really much stronger coming out of me, where it was like, no, no, we have to just follow, follow. So that kind of goes back to the title of this podcast, which is intuition and the business thereof. And it sounds like whether you call it a voice, whether you call it an inkling or wisdom or knowing or intuition, you had some sort of understanding that a change needed to be made. Okay. Fascinating. Yes. Okay. And so I'm curious, what was your family and your friends and your and your your colleagues at Ernst and Young? What did they say when you took this plum job, the American dream? 
you know, and you've got it in your hands and you decide to, to do something different? How did they respond to it? And did that influence you at all? No, a lot of people were very surprised and shocked. And yeah, I have, have, I'm in a very supportive family. So, so that, that was great. But yeah, I think a lot of people, and I, what I realized that for a lot of people, the reason that it's so hard to make any, and I actually don't recommend you do okay. that. I want to repeat that. But I think that a lot of people are so concerned and so afraid to make jumps and leaps is because they're actually not clear about what it is. They so want. what would you have done differently? I mean, would you have taken the same path or would you, I guess what I'm getting to is what's your model? What is your um, recommended recommendations for career education? What would that look like for somebody listening here and going, Hey, Misha, I'm here. You, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm in a career, whether it's making me a lot of money or not, but it's not satisfying me. I can identify with your, with your plight, your situation. What do I do? How do I find that? Um, yes. And, and more importantly, where do I, how do I get the courage to make those changes? Right. So one, that's where, you know, what I developed is what I call the career leap method that is specifically designed to help people to do just that. And the method starts with really, how do we get to clarity about what is our next leap? Like, how do we get there? And what's important here is to do this deep work. What I say is like function of how do you know what to do in your life? It's really a function of knowing who you are and what you want. And when I work, for instance, with my clients and with a part of my tool is to go into this deep understanding of what it is you want and who you are. And from there, you, there are so many different actual opportunities right now. We live in this extraordinary career times. And Dean, is it me or you are frozen? I think our frozen? internet's a little bit uh, shaky. So uh, guys at Turnkey Podcast, maybe you want to cut out some of this uh, extraneous conversation back and forth. And we'll just uh, pick up. I'm going to see if I can make some yes. sort of ad adjustments. <laughs> is it uh, any better on your end, Misha? I don't know what's going on here, my friend. But you were back to yeah, saying no about words. you know developing a career development process, uh, starting off with uh, sort of knowing who yeah. you are and knowing what you want. So say more about that. So when people ask me like, what should I do with my life? Like, what is the input into that? There are, and I usually say there are two inputs. One is understanding who you are and what you want. I call it career blueprint. It's a set of criteria related to the way you are designed, what motivates you, what brings you fulfillment and meaning, and a set of criteria around the things that you want, you know, it's on one side. And the, on the other side, I call it career leap map, which is the list of ideas of where and what you could be doing. Now, we live at the extraordinary career times because nobody had what we had. And I don't know how long with, with this will last with AI, but for now, we're still in those times because with remote work, there are the least amount of geographical boundaries than ever existed. I think with, uh, we have unprecedented access to learning that nobody ever had. I think that our society is going through major transformation. And when that happens, there are always additional opportunities. So we live in extraordinary career times. So the question is for every person to mm -hmm. ask, well, how do I take advantage of that? How do I figure out, A, what are my criteria and, and how do I find You bring up a good point. If you think about like, uh, you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, you know, there was a job to work on a farm or a job to work as a butcher or a job to work in the post office. And that's what you did. There was no, there was no other options or very few options. Now it's almost like, you know, you're going to a restaurant and the menu is 16 pages long and you kind of go, where do you want to start? You know, and it, I think it could almost become, uh, on one hand, a huge opportunity because we have so many more choices. But are you also finding, Misha, that on the other hand, that people are feeling almost overwhelmed by those choices? Like there's too many to choose from. And how do I make sense of it? You know, I, I remember being in China once and there was this restaurant that we would go to all the time. It was called Pure Lotus, and it was literally like 17 pages worth of wonderful food. And I went, I just want a two-page menu. This is too much. I can't handle all this, these choices. Yeah. Are we in that same state? 
and and how do you then work with clients and how can a listener be able to go based on the fact that there's a plethora of opportunities here how do i choose yeah well part of it i don't think a lot of people think in 17 page <laughs> menus yeah. right now in fact what i discovered that people actually really limit what do they think they possible like you know i was working with this one gentleman he's like hey you know i used to work in consulting and that i didn't like it and then i work, went to work in the industry and now i'm kind of have doubts about that so you know why don't i go back to consulting so so actually i don't think people think about some people do think of those these so i think for a lot of people the limiting factor is they actually are thinking too narrow they're actually not considering enough options and that's would be their reason they not uh nailing the thing that they want and the people that do have like i also work with people that have had abundance of ideas so for those people you really need to think about like what is the good criteria or more like what what is the foundation of the choice that i make right and that's where this inner work on career blueprint to understanding who you are and what you want that's what really helps people to narrow down the options uh from this big menu but different people have kind of different types of limitations in pursuing. But what I know, and I'm talking to your listeners, if you feel stuck, if you don't feel like you're fulfilled, and by the way, you might have a great life and 99.9% .9 of percent people on the earth might be jealous of what you have, but it's not about that. It's about your personal definition of joy, your personal definition of success, your personal definition of happiness. So that means it's your time to go and embark on this inquiry, who you are, like, what do you want? And what are my mm. options? Good. So you mentioned earlier, before we started this conversation, that there were three uh, stages, I think it was, or three cycles of a career. What are those three? So let's see. So let me tell you, like, your work, you could be in your career. One is... Am I in the right place? Should I actually reinvent what I'm doing? You know, that, that actually a lot of people kind of coming to this point and said, I kind of reached what I'm here to reach, right? How do I reinvent myself? Another place where you could be, hey, I know I actually like it here. I actually feel like I'm in the right organization. I feel like I'm doing the right things, but I'm looking to grow, right? right? And the third place where I find commonly people think about well, maybe I should start my own business. And how do I move from corporate career to entrepreneurship? Th these are the three kind of common places that are okay. That, that very I good. See. So, if let's say I'm a, an individual, I'm working in a in a company. You know, I, I overall I like what I do. Uh, maybe I'm getting a little bored. You know, but I don't want to make any big leaps out of the company. You know, for whatever reasons, benefits and the people that I like to work with and the work that we do. But I'm feeling a little stale around the edges. Uh, so there's definitely sort of a career development that needs to happen within my current company. How do you work with a person or what kind of questions might you help a person answer who might find themselves in that situation? Right. So I always start with your career blueprint and who you are and what it is you want. Because if you're working for a great company and you're liking what you do, there are so many ways in which you could grow your career. So part of your career leap map what i call which is a list of ideas of where what you could be doing would be opportunities within your company so one of the things i would still understand do i want to work and grow and become like a senior manager or be in a c-suite or do i want to expand my skills and just try myself in different roles so so part of that inquiry is really understanding which direction do you want to take right. Right. And that, that would be the, the beginning of the inquiry. So what about here. the other side of the, the, of the ledger, if you will, Amisha? So you may uh, have uh, some desires for a different type of job, career, function, scope, you name it. But then there's the other piece of that, which is, am I the right person for that? Do I have the right skills, the right attitudes, the right mindset, the right being, whatever it might be, to be able to fill the the necessary uh, requirements for that that expanded role. Do you work with people on that? And, and, and do you help identify what those gaps might be in order to fulfill that future state? So this is a very interesting question because actually I find people get stuck at this point. They're like, well, I would like to make a change, but what if I don't, don't make enough money? Or what if I don't have <laughs> enough skills? And very often 
they do that before they actually nail what is the leap they want to make. So in the absence of understanding where you're going, it's actually very scary and very terrifying because you can't really manage your risks because you really don't know whether you have the right skills or the right qualifications or whether this position will actually meet your financial criteria. So, it, but that's why I think you always start with understanding what, what it is you want and who you are and what are your opportunities. And part of it, when you go through the selection process, you definitely take into account your skills and experiences. Yes. Let me give you an example. I worked with this brilliant lady who was an international tax lawyer, right? So smart. You, you have to have so many degrees to, to be able to do what she does. And she said, you know, I have no idea how I ended up here. You know, somebody told me do this and I thought it was a good idea. And somebody told me and said, then now I have this job that I really don't like. What? And I actually, the only idea that I have is to start my own business, but I'm not ready for it. And I feel horribly stuck, right? So when we feel stuck is whether the ideas that we have either not exciting or not pragmatic, right? So either staying at her current job, which wasn't exciting for the, or starting her own business, which wasn't pragmatic for her. So she felt stuck. So we did all the work, you know, we did all the work on her career blueprint. And one of the things that we realized uh, is that she was really passionate about kids. She had two young children, kids' education, development, and safety. And even her business was related to children-related products, right? Okay. So we found at least the direction that she wanted to go. Now, she was a lawyer, so we looked at what would, could be potential right roles for her, right? And then she was this very organized go-getter type of the person. And we thought, okay, COO or operations type of a role in a children or educational type of business would be kind of the right direction to go. So it was like, it, it's a really very pragmatic exercise, but that connects you to, I call it a sky, to your dreams and to your aspirations and to your heart. Now, the next thing I know, she's calling me, Misha, I got a gig in a startup, educational toy startup. I'll be in operational role, and I will not only be doing what is aligned with my values and what I wanted to do, but I will also be exploring whether running my own business is the right thing for me, and if it is, I'll be learning. So here is an example, right? So you kind of can't really skip parts of the process here or otherwise you end up like with some missing pieces. I get it, yeah. So it, it sounds like just a recap we were saying is that it's really important to know yourself, to kind of identify what it is that you want. That helps the foundational piece of this career blueprint that you're not necessarily espousing that people should take the leap that you did because that was a dramatic one. But on the other hand, I think I hear you say without necessarily saying it out loud too loudly is that you don't have to have it all figured out in order to make those changes. You don't, sometimes we can become into a kind of analysis paralysis and that stops us from committing. You know, there's a, I actually, no, I actually believe that you can make very thoughtful I do, I understood. choices. Okay. But so I actually do think it's not about analysis. I actually do think when I work with my clients, I want them before they make a leap, make sure that they're making a very Understood. good okay. choice for themselves. That's why we're going through this very thorough exercise that they're not just putting your fingers like, okay, maybe I could do this. No, no, let's get to the source of it. Let's understand why would you be doing, want, want to be doing these things? Are you qualified to do what will be the impact for you and your family to so actually lead people through the process so they make very good choices. Understood. That stand Understood. By. Okay. Well said. An analysis paralysis is when people feel stuck and then they really don't know how to investigate yeah. their options. And, and, and then they feel stuck because they can't really make a decision and move forward. What I take people through so they can make but a decision. Aren't there certain styles though, or certain personality types that, that are going to be more prone to making a uh, change in their life and more, and some would be more cautious, you know? And that is, is, is some of the things that prevent people from doing their, their life's work, maybe being in jobs that maybe they really don't love, which got them into the position that they're in in the first place, is out of some sort of duty or out of some sort of, you know, um, playing it safe and, 
and not listening to that wisdom and, and, and not wanting to take the risks that, you know, ultimately would make them more happy. This is, I, th I think, the most important point here that exploration is, is risk-free. This is where people kind of miss that they, that they even, they are afraid to explore. So I think if you do a thorough exploration, you can actually eliminate a lot of risks and a lot of fears. You might still have some, but if you're going through a thoughtful analysis of things, then you can be ready for, and then you make decisions based on your, you know, how much okay. risk you're willing to take or that, that would be. But to me, what's important in this discovery process, I call it a discovery process, that people understand and get to very thoughtful choices. So they could make good decisions based on whatever their circumstances. So maybe I'll just, I guess I will correct myself in my former comment here that I, if I'm, I'm hearing you correctly, what you're saying is that through this thoughtful analysis and this process, you begin to reduce the risk, reduce the fear, because you really explored a lot of different options and all the consequences and benefits and so forth that lay within or lie within. And that makes it, makes it easier to exactly. say, yes, let's do this or not. Exactly. That, that's what makes it feel like yeah. not jumping off the cliff, but really making a leap because you kind of value. Now, there is still risk. It still could be scary, but you dealt with a lot of unknown and a lot of risk and fear to, or in order to make your good decision. And then it's much easier also to make these. Could, types I mean, of so changes. how can we implement this process? You know, I'm not saying that we're it is transferable because you need a skilled person like yourself. But, you know, could have, if I were a leader within a company and I am working with my mm -hmm. subordinate and it's the beginning of the year, here we are, it's January, it's 2024 when you and I are having this conversation. And one of the things that are happening across the country and many companies is that we're doing the annual review, right? All that very popular thing that some people abhor doing and but some companies will actually say let's include in this annual review a conversation about career development where do you want to be when you grow up you know what would you like to be, end up at some point in this organization are there certain things that a manager leader could take from your ideas and implement them into those kinds of conversations and if so what would they be listen i my, my general position for a person that your managers might not be your best person to advocate for you. They could be a good person to advocate with for you in your current job, you know, right. if you're lucky. But it's very rare that this person also could pull themselves out of this role as your manager and be your life mentor. That's why I think your inquiry, your manager might have a role there. Again, they, they, then the managers have their own agenda and their own piece. Your company that you work on has their own agenda, their own piece. So if you really want to explore, I suggest you look broader than that. Even if you, at the end of the day, choose to stay there. Uh, so what would I recommend for managers actually, you know, to, to make this more thoughtful, to understand what types of experiences a person enjoys doing, what it is they good at, what it is they would want to do, what types of the things they yeah. want to learn. But what I'm proposing is really it's way beyond, beyond what that. manager I'm just thinking like in terms of like, you know, career development, I think organizations have to be cognizant of the idea that if you're not developing your people, not advancing them into more roles, more opportunities, that you're going to be missing the opportunity to keep some of them because some of them are going to move on. You know, they're going to say, I would rather go to another company unless you're going to continue to give me opportunities. So I, I guess what I'm sort of sensing is that the full package of looking at the entire person's life, right. that may not be skill set of that manager talking to their subordinate, but they certainly could help them explore options within the organization, sure. you know, and then help them. Sure. But I still think if you want to drive this process, you start with your own clarity. And once you have your own clarity, then you think about what resources you want to use, including your manager or other relationships with an organization to drive you there. This is what I discovered, the three main drivers of people's careers. The first one is other people's opinions. You know, like that starts probably very early when we live in an environment with our parents or 
uh, even society in general that says like what's good, what's not good in terms of profession. And we use a lot of people get influenced by that. The second one is circum circumstantial. So you don't know the way a lot of people get jobs, you know, a recruiter called or somebody or this thing happened and it becomes circumstantial. And the third one is stagnation where we stay because we either afraid mm -hmm. to make a change or for whatever other reason. So what I really teach people is how to avoid these three drivers. Because if you are clear about who you are and what you want, then you can craft your own path for you, not just end up with a circumstantial possibility. Well said. So you mentioned, I think through your, exa uh, your example, there was a woman that uh, wanted to work with kids and it made me think about our education system. You know, what would, well, if I'm a parent, my, my son is, is now, you know, 23 or so. So it's, it's, it's still a conversation, but not as much as it was, right? But what, what can yes. a parent do for their children to help them think about careers in a way that pulls upon some of the things you've been talking about? If I were to sit down with my high schooler and we're sitting around the table and we're talking about, you know, college mm -hmm. or vocational schools or what they want to do, what kind of questions might I ask them? To help them think about the things that you've been talking to us about. So one of the things that drives, and one of the reasons that I like to work with mid-career and senior career professionals, because they actually have a lot of data points about themselves. So they come into working with me with a, quite a bit of knowledge about themselves. It just might not be articulated in a way they can use it to make the best for them choices, but they, there are a lot of data points. But when we talk to people that are younger, they actually don't have a lot mm. of data points. So one thing I would focus that they get data points, what it is, and try a lot of different things. They should try manage things and try execute things and try build things and try create things and try, you know, organize things and try whatever it is. Just try, 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 try to see then which actually is sticking yes. with them. Yeah. And my dear boy, I love to pieces, said to me a couple of days ago. Dad, 2024 is the year that I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And they went, boy, oh boy, I guess I, I worked with them on it. Says, how about just going out there and exploring, you know, smorgasbord of things. And, and you're going to learn through the experience. Yes. But to put that kind of pressure on yourself that you have to get it right and figure it out. And it's going to be the same thing between now and when you're 80 is a huge pressure. Maybe you can, you know not put that on yourself. And so I've been trying to work with them on that, but it sounds like you sort of echo that idea is let's try some stuff, like right? let's not get locked in on one thing. It's the exploration that's, that's so important. I also think it's important to remember that we're moving to this time when people will be changing careers much more often. Yeah. You know, it, it will be much more yeah. common. I think with the way technology and society is developing, probably an average person will have three, four exactly. careers. So what becomes very important about your career blueprint or career blueprint for especially younger generation, that you'll be making these career decisions not once. You'll be need to make them yeah. many times. So that skill of career education becomes even more important. And also we need to understand that current education, we need to assume that current like higher education system is not going to prepare them for what's coming right. next. Just because of the way things yeah. change. So I think the paradigm here changes dramatically. Yeah. And I think it's people that are agile and uh, willing to learn new things and jump on new things will much more likely to be successful in this new environment. Yeah. For the parents out there that have had their same job for the last 20, 30 years, you know, having this conversation with your kid about the, uh, you know, the idea mm -hmm. that you may have several careers is sort of at, you know, the opposite of what they're observing in you. And I've noticed that I've had this job because I've been an entrepreneur for 30 mm -hmm. years. That's all my son has ever seen is me in the same position. So he doesn't know the agility of bouncing around different careers, right? Even though I can talk about the value of it, that's not been our family experience, right? So anyway, good, good point on that. So uh, Misha, tell people how they can follow what you're all about, your program. You know, if there's somebody out there listening and go, eh, I need to know more, how do they do that? Hey, great. So the best thing, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm Misha Rubin, M-I-S-H-A-R-U-B-I-N. Or go to my website, MishaRubin.com, and you will find a lot of things about me. 
and you get and about programs, my programs. right you've got different you know consulting opportunities for people to connect with you if they so desire sure i have a digital programs and i have one on one programs i have a bunch of opportunities of how people can work with me so the final fi- final thought as we close out our conversation is there any major point that you would like people to embed in their brains as we say goodbye well I, this is what I really want people to understand. Just do not give up. Like I know for myself, and I remember those times of career stuckness could be very challenging and it could be very hope, hope, hopeless, you know, that keep looking, keep exploring, don't give up, have conversations, read books, uh, uh, reach out to an expert, just keep moving. Don't just go and give up and stagnate there and one place because you don't see the answer for now yeah. and some for some people you know i one of the pleasures of my joy of my work that sometimes people work with me and then in a few years i get misha by the way that thing that we did two three years ago right now like i just got an email from my client right now i finally started this master's degree and i'm changing my career so it took like three years for that person to make the change sometimes it takes a while but yeah. just don't give up just keep going keep exploring keep trying Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your, uh, your words of wisdom, for your, your courage to take the leap yourself and to help us do the same. It's my pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Business of Intuition. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to learn more about Dean or Mission Facilitators Leadership, go to mfileadership.com. That's mfileadership.com.